So we're going to install Python, and we're going to install, in this case, uh, using Windows Vista. And it really is a fairly simple process. We're going to go to the Python website, which is www.python.org. You can see it came up there. And what's neat about uh, installing under Windows is that if you look right over here on the left-hand side of the homepage for python.org, you can see that there are links for version 2.6, and now there are also links for the new version 3.1, which is the version we're going to use. And because we're using Windows, they actually have the Windows installer right here on the front page. And so we can simply click on Windows installer, and we would like to download that file. It's going to take a few minutes because it needs to check for viruses and so on. And I'm just going to let this work through. Even if it takes a little bit of time, I'm going to let it go through the entire process so you can see what happens as you install this for those that don't normally install software, uh, just to make sure that you can see what's happening. Okay, so this download is complete. Now this file, I could uh, go find it and, and save it somewhere else and manipulate it, but all I really need to do is just start it. And so I'm just going to double click and you can see it's executable. Do I really want to do this? Yes, I do. So I click OK. And now the installer is going to try to start. Uh, I get the Vista security warning. Yes, I do want to run this because I'm installing Python. I know what I'm up to. This question uh, relates to whether I'm installing for me or whether I'm actually installing across an entire uh, system of users uh, that users might be logging in. Probably in your case, um, installing uh, for just you is fine, although it looks like under Vista uh, we don't have that choice, so typically the default is the best way to go. Python 3.1 is the directory it wants to store that in. Sounds fine to me. And it says that there is already a directory that exists I've likely been installing different versions of the beta and so I'm willing to overwrite those because I want this version, it's the final version of 3.1. You likely wouldn't have that question come up and so we'll go ahead and click next. Do I want to customize anything? No, I'm going to take it just the way it is. So I'm going to click next and now it says that it's starting the install process and this is going to take a few minutes and I'm just going to let it run even though it's going to be boring because not a whole lot's going to happen. But I'll talk about it when we get to that point. I guess we have to give it our permission, and there it goes. Okay, so looks like the Windows installer has done its job, and we can click Finish. And I'm just going to close out of this download window as well. So here I'm back to the python.org website. Now, if I go down to the Start menu and look at the programs that have been installed, I can now see that in my case, I've actually got three different versions of Python. I've got Python 2.5, Python 3.0, and now here's Python 3.1, and that's the one we're going to use. You very well probably don't have these two, um, so I'm just going to click on Python 3.1, and you can see that I can start idle for Python 3.1. I can actually start a command line version of Python, but most of our work is going to be done simply using idle. So let's just test this out. Let's click on idle. Remember that idle will bring up a shell, and there it is. We can see Python 3.1, final release candidate, uh, June 26th. This is the, the brand new version of Python 3.1. And of course, we can also um, open a new window if we want for editing and so on. Uh, you've seen that before. So everything seems to be working just fine. And now we've got Python installed for Windows.